Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Game and Subby Mountain Sword of the Gaming Dragon Day. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Green Eyes End. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Alright. Rare and unique local spices and herbs have become well known among tourists, making it a stop for the cure making it a must stop for the curious. Local music and theater have also become synonymous with the town. Local artists, due to the lack of funds, had to build their own instruments and clothing, leading to a unique sense of style. The town's most famous artists being the singer duo comprised of Olivia Orland, mayor of the town from 2008 to the current year, and Diana Rocha Orland, deceased as of 2010. Myths and rumors made the town famous among cult enthusiasts. Many have told the goat. Many have told of the ghost cat who steals books. One's reflection take talking back at them in the mirror, and living animal-human hybrids that inhabit the woods. Many of these tales originate from the old settlers, who come to town offering stories, spices, and food in exchange for money. Local authorities nowadays refuse to, refuse to publish the town's pictures, history, or events on the internet, choosing to make it so that people need to come personally to witness its many wonders. Very rarely are outside journalists given permission to publish something in their magazines. The wall of information ends there, near a corner where I see a bunch of people waiting and chatting. Olivia is on the lead again! Don't people realize she's running this town into the ground? From what I see, she's doing a good job keeping good relations between the town and the old settlers, something our previous mayors did terribly at. Screw the old settlers! They're not the ones paying your taxes and keeping the town afloat! It's a mining company! Plus, I've heard the town, I've heard the people at the detective agency do most, uh, do most of the peacekeeping work here anyways. Still, still helps to have a mayor that at least acknowledges the need to maintain relations. The pair continues arguing for a long while. They weren't giving me much to work with besides that initial part, though. On a nearby wall, I find an information board with directions. The mayor's office is at the top floor. Most of the other rooms are for documentation processing. I see no storage room, though. They, do they have so few it all fits in the offices? Shame. I was hoping this would be a good place to find loads of information. Right around the corner, there's a small empty office, too. Might be a good place for a private conversation. I look in the direction of the office, seeing a faint, natural light peeking from under the door. Two voices come from inside. The room is small as a small enough for at best four people. There's one table and two chairs. It's likely intended to be used for individual interviews. I see Lorelai and me sitting across from each other. The journalists take, take making themselves comfortable in the chair. No papers or phone in hand. This is supposed to be an interview, right? Are you not going to take some notes? I have quite a good memory, Dan. Besides, paper leaves a trace, so I avoid it as best as I can unless I intend to publish its contents. This is just an interview to see if you're trustworthy for the job. Wouldn't want any personal information leaking. I'm not sharing anything too personal, if that's what you're hoping for. Only some simple questions. All I ask is that you answer them with honesty. This is a test of personality. Here's the first. What are your goals in life? My professional interests lie in social economics and engineering. I want to help build equipment and services to make businesses run smoothly. Are you interested in the leadership position? Can't say I am, no. I prefer a more personal approach. What about personal goals? I'd like to build my own house, have a well-organized space with some flexibility to adapt over time. Do you intend to create a family? If so, how big? I'd like a reasonably big family, maybe two or three kids. If you were to offered such an if you were offered an incredible job, but that meant moving being far away from your family, aside from vacations, would you take it? A simple, peaceful life appeals to me more than ambitious pursuits. If you were given superpowers, would you attempt vigilante work? I don't think so, no. I prefer a more traditional line of work. Even if you had the police's support, even so. What's your opinion on the old settlers? Don't know much about them. They seem too uptight about their own rules and culture, but I assume there must be more to the story. What about the mining company? It's run efficiently, have made some important contributions to the town, but there's a couple of concerns I have regarding future ramifications sprung by current tax. Care to elaborate? No. Thank you. I believe I have all I wanted. Would you mind waiting for me for here for a few minutes? I want to interview Neil too, and I'd rather hold his and rather I'd rather hold this spot. Sure, I'm free until the meeting anyway. Thank you. Lorelai leaves the room, not bothering to gather up his stuff. For a while, I'm left alone in the room with uns with all their unsupervised belongings. How oh, careless! I get it from my seat and approach the bag. I stare at it, hesitating to open it. Don't follow this path, Dan. Don't. Despite the words, I continue to stand next to the bag for a couple more minutes. A loud ringing noise comes from it, scaring me back to my seat. The phone stops ringing a few minutes later. Lorelai doesn't show up until another five more minutes. 
Sorry for the wait. Had to stop at the bathroom. Where's Neil? I'll get him in a bit, after... The journalist reaches for his bag, opening it and grabbing a small plastic device. He shows it to me. What is that? A proximity device. It pages my phone if it detects something. It didn't go off. Of course, you set up the call. You set up the call too, didn't you? Tell me, Dan. Did you not snoop in? Did you not snoop it in because it broke a moral code, or did you guess it was a trap? The former, mostly, though I suspected you'd try something. I see. Honest, but not as impressive. Does that mean I passed the test? You start tomorrow. At that moment, someone knocks on the door. Neil asks if they can come in. Lorelai waves me goodbye, telling the old man to enter. The vision fades, sending me back to the dark halls of the afterlife. I wander, I wander through Town Hall, entering every room to check for information and potential memory spots. There's a surprising lack of documents stored in Town Hall. Checking the few I found, I see references to some codes. B1, 2B9, 23, B3, 5MX02. Archival numbers? One second, y'all. Alright, y'all, and we are back. If the town is trying to avoid information leaking online, they might archive everything locally. That would require a pretty big building, though. Better make a mental note for that. For now, I think I'll just hit the mayor's office. The top floor is the only one left, and if anyone has information readily available, it'd be the mayor. On the way up the stairs, a faint natural glow comes from above. I walk up, finding it originates from a particular door. The label on it reads Mayor's Office. Oh wow, oh shit, a lot of people. I enter the room along with Neil and Lorelai. Inside we find the mayor, my father, two others, the old chief, Fame, and the detective. The room is pretty lively and comfortable, but a little tight fits to fit this many people. Good morning, everybody. Now that we are all here, please let us introduce ourselves to our newcomers. Allow me to start. I'm Olivia Orland, the mayor of Green Iron's End. I, along with the rest of the town hall, town hall workers, will be in charge of directing and publishing the festival. The mayor motions for introductions to go in a clockwise circle. Rodrigo Rocha, CEO of Green Iron's Constructions, and in charge of financing the festival. Roberta Dolores. A principal of Green Education School, in charge of prop making. Marcus Gray, Chief of Police, Security. Damn, that thunder outside is wild. Uh, Danielle Rocha, Assistant. Neil Klein, Assistant. Lorelai Anderson, International International Journalist. I'll be providing counseling and help with external publishing. Fame. Contact and manager for the Old Settlers. Lapis, Old Settlers Chief. Supervisor. Enrique Almer, Private Detective. We'll assist Town Hall with document processing and validation. Thank you, everyone. Now we may commence this meeting. Let's begin by discussing what resources we have available. We'll be setting the festival at the public park near Town Hall. It should be big enough for 1,000 attendees. The main street will also be holding a few attractions since it connects to the connects to most of the hotels the hotels available. Our primary goal with this festival is to improve relations between the town, the miners, and the old settlers. We must make sure every side benefits from this. Sir Rodrigo, what budget have you decided on? We'd like to invest one million euro on the festival. Four hundred will be used to run the party, while the rest will serve as publishing budget. How much will How much will the old settlers have? Depends on how all parties intend, the, intend to construct the festival. 20,000 is a safe bet. You're only giving us 5%. How is that remotely fair? Relax, a ton of money will be needed to prepare the town to receive all the attendees and process all the documents. Most of our hotels can even host multiple do, most, most of our hotels can even host multiple dozens at a time. Second, y'all. Alright, we are back. I'm doing little pauses because uh, we've got lots of uh, weather outside, just in case the power goes out. <clears throat> Great Bruce Hotel is currently equipped for 25, and we are the biggest one. Oh, wait. No, okay. Great Breeze Hotel is currently equipped for 25, and we are the biggest one. Precisely, and we'll need Great Breeze to take at least 100 for this event. The old settler's chief huffs, but doesn't continue the discussion. How much personnel do each of you have to spare, Rodrigo? Forty workers, plus a few hirees we intend to get from town. Dolores. We'll have all grades working on minor, gr on minor props as part of the school assignments. 
And minus the special cases and a few spare for regular school activities, I'd say we have about 70 students. Chief? Five, fame included. Fame swiftly approaches the Chief, speaking with a calm and quiet tone. Chief, we could delay the expansion a bit, get the workers to help with the festival instead. I believe this will benefit us greatly over time. No, we can't rely on lofty expectations. Five people won't accomplish much. We'll hire some we'll hire some descendants then. You know quite a few, don't you, Almer? Sure do. Gray. We can have about fifteen cops on job. With proper camera surveillance and some security protocols in place, it should suffice for the festival. And detective? We'll be collaborating with outside agencies to help expedite the process, plus three of our own. Won't be an issue validating a thousand or two individuals. You make sure the attendees confirm their presence at least one month prior. Thank you. Now, as for deciding what we'll do exactly, our international friend has experience covering and organizing festivals. We'll all provide them with information to work with. I have requested before coming here that you all give me a tour of the town. This is something I need both of you, both to help you design the festival, and, but also to publish it. The mining company is happy to abide. The village will do the same. And I'll have a few guides, guides help you with various areas of town. And things should go smoothly. Oh, and these two, Neil Klein and Daniel Rocha, have agreed to be my assistants throughout my stay. Are you alright with them accompanying me? No problem. The son of the CEO playing the assistant role. Curious, but I don't object as long as the guard has them, has them always on sight. Is it alright for it to be me instead? That will do. I, I agree to those terms. Superb. Take it away, Miss Mayor. This will be it for now. We'll wait for Lorelai to inspect the town and report his findings before proceeding to the next step. You are all dismissed for now. Daniel, stay here for a minute. The room clears out, leaving only me and the mayor inside. Come from the mayor. What did you want to talk about? Just one moment. They should come back in a few minutes. They? Your father has told you he'd like to meet a certain group of people, correct? This is where it'll happen. So you're one of them. To be honest, what he told me sounded a little crazy. Couldn't tell if it was supposed to be a weird sales pitch or if he genuinely, genuinely believed that. I thought the same at first. It's real. Trust me. Care to humor me for a moment, nephew? Sure. Shoot. Have you ever heard about a ghost cat? The one that knocks books down? Apparently it's a local tale. It used to be more famous back in the day. Indeed it was. I have seen them myself. It was the same day that the theater I used to work on was destroyed. That day, an eccentric man by the name Steve Forges was hosting a speech about the supernatural. About how he could turn any stone into gold. That we all could, if we were willing to learn. Alright y'all, I'm actually gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye